Hello, and welcome to part four of the Windows Autopilot Overview video series. In this final session, we'll take a closer look at the end user's experiences with Windows Autopilot. We have now seen the Windows Autopilot experiences from the point of view of the IT pros, OEMs, and partners. Now let's take a look at the end user's experiences with Windows Autopilot. This stage should bring together all of the planning and configuration activities of the IT pros, OEMs, and partners to provide an easy and consistent experience for end users to set up their devices for the first time. Whether the end users are students, teachers, or staff. At this stage, the end user will simply turn on the device and walk through the initial setup experience configured by the IT pros. During the end user part of the flow, devices will seamlessly connect to all three cloud services, Azure Active Directory for authentication, Windows Autopilot for the initial device setup configuration, and finally, the Microsoft Intune for apps and policies. If the device has gone through the Windows Autopilot pre-provisioned deployment flow, the end user should have all of the required apps and policies immediately after the enrollment is complete, allowing end users to be productive right away. If the device has been pre-assigned to a specific user, all the user has to do is enter the password during the provisioning process, which makes it a lot easier for the initial device setup experience. For devices that were configured using the self-deploy mode, the provisioning steps are all completed, and end users can simply sign in to their devices and begin using their devices right away. Let's now walk through two different scenarios of the Windows Autopilot user-driven flow. The first scenario, the user is going to be pre-assigned to a specific device and will contrast with the second scenario without any user assignment. In this scenario, the device has gone through the pre-provisioned deployment admin flow with a user assignment. This makes for a more personalized user experience and simpler initial device setup. Because the device has gone through the Windows Autopilot pre-provisioned deployment admin flow, by a partner, all the required apps and policies have all been pre-cached, and the device is ready for productive use immediately after the first sign-in. Let's take a look at what the experience looks like. The device is going to boot into the out-of-box experience. Once that occurs, we'll select the appropriate region, the keyboard, and we'll make sure that the autopilot profile gets loaded. And we can see a more personalized experience for Allison, who can now just proceed by typing her password. Now we come to the very familiar enrollment status page. The first two stages, device preparation, device setup is already complete. So now we just need to process any policies and apps targeted to Allison. Once that's complete, Allison can successfully get access to her desktop and the device is ready for productive use with all of the settings and policies required for her to be productive. To contrast with the previous experience where Allison was assigned to a specific device, let's take a look at a more traditional Windows Autopilot user-driven flow where devices are not pre-assigned. This can be very helpful for simplifying the device distribution process because then any student can pick up any of the available devices at the time of device distribution. The ESP enables a consistent end user experience by ensuring that devices receive the required applications and policies before end users sign in to the devices for the first time. This process will also allow for the custom targeting of apps and policies based on the specific requirements of each use case that Autopilot will be used for. For example, student devices will get a predefined set of applications and policies, which will be different than the set of apps and policies that the staff devices will receive. Now let's take a look at the enrollment experience. So the device will boot into the out-of-box experience, and the user will then be able to select the region. Next, they'll select the keyboard layout, can then skip the second keyboard layout. We'll then connect to the network. Once that's completed, we'll ensure that the device picks up a 
autopilot profile. Now you can see that the user can now provide their credential to sign into the device. So Allison is going to go ahead and provide username and password. And we'll now get to the familiar enrollment status page. And in the, in the device preparation step, uh, the device will get MDM enrolled. And in the device setup stage, we'll process any security policies, certificates, network connections, and all of the apps that have been targeted to this specific device. Next, under the account setup stage, which is the user evaluation of the enrollment status page, we'll process any security policies, certificates, network connections, or applications that are targeted directly to Allison. Once that step is completed, Allison will get access to the desktop so she can begin using the device right away with all the required apps and policies already applied. This is the end of module 6.7, Windows Autopilot and User Experiences. This is the final session of the Windows Autopilot video series. Here's a brief recap of what we covered. In the first session, we covered the Windows Autopilot fundamentals followed by sessions covering the experiences of Windows Autopilot from the IT pros, OEMs, and partners' point of view. Finally, we walk through the end-user experiences to bring it all together. Here are some additional links, which expands on the concepts that we've covered during this video series to help you with your Windows Autopilot learning journey.